Kabondo nengato mbinga lina mana sokolono mira kato neke lina mana gea the entrance of your word give it light it give it understanding to the simple lega zoko lega rena katolina managere neke tusa katalia egebo jaka ya namahaha Father we give you praise and we honor the name of Jesus the name that is above every name the name that rules in heaven on earth and under the earth and we rejoice that we are called by that name. And tonight in that name, we receive everything that is ours by virtue of the finished work of Christ. And we pray for everybody connected to the service tonight. We declare that the eyes of each one's understanding flooded with light. We decree that each one is strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man. And we declare that men come to the truth of the gospel tonight. Veils fall off, clarity comes. And we declare that by the end of this service, we're all the better for it. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says it powerfully, amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together as we say these words. I am born of God. I am born of the word. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore, today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus name. And every believer says a powerful amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to the service tonight by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. And we want to welcome everybody that is connected by way of Comfort FM right here in Aquaibom State. It's a joy to have every one of you connected to the service. You need to invite a friend, a loved one, get somebody to hook up to this radio station. It's going to be an exciting time of studying the word of his grace. All our house centers and our campuses, it's a joy to have all of you connected to the service tonight. I tell you, we're going to have an exciting time studying the word of his grace. I'd like you tonight to grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible, and your sweet smart self. You can be seated as we get into the word of God. Glory to God forevermore. <clears throat> All right, we're still looking at the vital and the legal work of salvation. You know, the legal and the vital work of salvation. We're, we're going to be here for quite a bit, you know. The legal and the vital work of salvation is still soteria season 7. It's no more 30 days, it's now 60 days of glory. And it's a joy to be able to bring the word every day. Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 1. Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape? That's our escape from that recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect? So great salvation. So great salvation. Look at the emotions. So great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Next verse. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. <clears throat> we have seen that salvation of humanity was done wholesale. Salvation of humanity was done wholesale. It was offered spirit, soul, and body. It's not just that he offered his body, talking about Jesus. He actually offered himself, spirit, soul, and body for the redemption of humanity. We have also seen that when he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God actually forsook him to fulfill the redemptive work. We have also seen that in Genesis chapter 3, God had man move from him. Man went away from God. All right? In Eden. But on the cross, God moved away from man, showing you that it was a redemptive work that God did for man. God moved away from man on the cross. And you know who the man is. The man Christ Jesus who represents all of humanity. Mm -hmm. Now, we have seen that in hell, you know, if Jesus did not do certain things, he would have remained there in hell. If Jesus didn't do certain things, he would have remained there in hell. And the other day we took time to go into the details of the things that Jesus did. I will encourage you, if you've not been following the series, to get the previous teachings because they will help you to understand what happened from the cross to the grave 
to the throne where he became the high priest. All right? And we saw what Jesus did and how he was raised from the dead. He wasn't raised from the dead by God. You know, just coming after him and saying, where are you, Jesus? Where are you? In the midst of people. Where are you in the dead bodies? Where are you, Jesus? All right, come out. Or God didn't say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, please run into the grave so you can bring Jesus up. There was no such thing at all. You know, Jesus became the firstborn or the first fruit so that others by identification will be raised from the dead. He's the first fruit or the firstborn death to spiritual life. We are birthed from spiritual death to spiritual life because Jesus came from the dead to life. Remember, through death, he destroyed him that had the power of death. Now, we, we had to follow that order because that order was that it is from death to life. Jesus came from death to life. We also, we came from death to life. Now, Jesus was raised from spiritual death. And you have to get accustomed to that. That Jesus was raised from spiritual death. Now, so we have been looking at the Passover and looking at the body of Jesus. Now, please listen very carefully and attentively. Jesus is spirit, soul, and body. Jesus is spirit, soul, and body. So when we say Jesus is a man, he is not a man because he picked a body. He is not a man because he picked a body. He is a man, spirit, soul, and body. If he is God in the spirit, man in the body, then that is not redemption. He is a man, spirit, soul, and body. Please, that's very, very important. He had to be fully man. Because what we call a man is not just a body. What we call a man is a spirit. Man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. So when Jesus hung on the cross, his body and spirit were there with him. When he said, into your hands, I commit my spirit. His body was laid in the tomb. Into your hands, I commit my spirit. His physical body was laid in the tomb. Alright, please pay attention. So, the components were complete. There was spirit and you know soul is part of the spirit. And then there is body. So, when he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Alright? Now, when he did that, he gave up the ghost. So, his body was put in the tomb while his spirit went to hell because by this time, the Father had forsaken him. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Please pay attention. This is very important. Now, his spirit went to hell. And you know, we took time to explain that. And the body of Jesus actually died. It was not the beatings of the soldiers that killed Jesus. It was the act of redemption. It was the act of redemption that made Jesus' physical body to be dead. It was not that they beat him and beat him and beat him. Then Jesus lost breath. Then he lost strength and lost energy and collapsed. No. What made the body of Jesus physically dead was the fact that sickness was laid on that body. Was the fact that sickness was laid on that body. Before that point, that body was not subject to mortality. Before that point, the body of Jesus was not subject to mortality. Jesus identified with mortal body. When we say mortality, we are referring to a body that is subject to death. Based on the fact that the human spirit is spiritually dead. The body is subject to death based on the fact that the spirit of a man is spiritually dead. So, when the spirit died, that is what gave rise to physical death. Please pay attention now. <clears throat> the body was subject to death only when Jesus gave up. His body was not subject to death until he became seen. Look at the kind of body that he had. 
Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me. A body thou hast prepared me. A physical body was prepared for Jesus. Look at verse 10 of Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10 verse 10. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Through the offering. So the body of Jesus was an offering. The body of Jesus was an offering. That is his body was offered and his physical body we are referring to. Somebody says, what kind of body did Jesus have? What kind of body did Adam have? Because the kind of body Jesus had was the same kind of body Adam had. Adam had a body that was not subject to death till he ate the fruit or till he sinned. He had a body that was not subject to death until sin came into the body. Remember Romans 5 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and because of sin, death. So until there was sin, there wouldn't have been death. It was the arrival of sin that brought death along with it. There was nothing wrong, you know, with the fruit that Adam ate in Eden. What was wrong with that? However, in that metaphorical communication was the disobedience that, you know, came along with that. And disobedience is what introduced into man's system sin. Then sin brought about death, what we call spiritual death. Then after spiritual death comes physical death. So observe the sequence. Sin, spiritual death, which now gave rise to physical death. That's the way it went. All right. So it is sin first, then spiritual death before physical death. Now, <clears throat> God said to Adam in Genesis, the day you eat of it in dying, you shall die. In dying, you shall die. And we know that Adam lived over almost a thousand years after he died. He lived over a thousand years. So the death there was not extinction. The death there was separation. The death there in Eden was not extinction. The death there was separation from God. Spiritual separation. And we were there too, you know, in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2 verse number 1. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You were dead in trespasses and sins. Next verse. In that dead condition, wherein in time past, you walked according to the cause of this world, according to the prince of the power of the pneuma, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. You were dead, but you were walking. You were dead, but you were driving. You were dead, but you were eating. You were dead, but you were marrying and getting given in marriage. You were dead, but you were going to university. You were dead, but you were attending secondary school. Because that death is spiritual, which now resulted in physical death. The same way Jesus could not die physically, if he was not dead spiritually. It was spiritual death that brought physical death into Jesus' body too. Just like Adam. If Adam had not sinned, he wouldn't have died. Now, stay with me. Jesus was made sin for us. That's the way brother Paul puts it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. He was made sin for us. He didn't commit sin, but he was made sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Who is on that computer? Please, NS, I need somebody that's working with me. For he hath made him to be seen for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now remember, his soul was offered as an offering for sin. His soul his being, not just his body, his soul, the real being of Jesus was offered as an offering for sin. 
Look at it in Isaiah 53 verse 10. Isaiah spoke about it in prophecy. Isaiah 53 verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. His soul, that is his being. An offering for sin. So David had spoken of Christ when he said, You will not leave my soul in hell. His soul, Isaiah said, was an offering for sin. And David said, Thou shalt not leave my soul in hell. Because his soul was in hell. Please stay with me because these facts are key for where I'm going tonight. Now, so Jesus' soul went to hell legitimately. Because he had become sin. So, it was until that point that his physical body was offered for sins. Remember, I said to you that Peter dealt with Jesus' physical body while Paul dealt with the spirit. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse number 24. Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree. That we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. So Peter dealt with the physical body of Jesus. While Paul dealt with the spirit, God made him sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness. Peter dealt with the physical body, Paul dealt with the spirit. Now please, listen very carefully. So his physical body was equally dead and lifeless. Because the body without the spirit is dead. That's what James said. The body without the spirit. So when the spirit leaves the body, we call it dead. And when man's spirit leaves God, we call it spiritual death. So Jesus was separated physically and spiritually. So Jesus died spiritually and physically. Why? That gives legality to redemption. That is what gives legality to redemption. Because man had to be redeemed, spirit, soul, and body. Man had to be redeemed, spirit, soul, and body. So Jesus had to be separated, spirit, soul, and body. So Jesus died, died, died. It was not just that he died. He died in all the different components that makes man, man. Please pay attention. Now, when Jesus died, he died physically and his body was lifeless. Battered, bruised, so that when he rose from the dead, he showed that body to his disciples. Remember, um, one of them said, I want to touch the hand. Thomas, right? Thomas. And Jesus said, look at it. So, it, it's not a different person. It's the same me that was beaten. It's the same me that was battered. Look at it. Even, you know, all of the scars and marks of all that I went through, they are still on my body. Handle me. Check it. See it. The same body. The same Jesus. The same Jesus. Now, <clears throat> Jesus showed them and he didn't only show them. He ate food with them. He asked them to give him food. They brought boiled fish. Just to make them know that this body is not spiritual. The body is not a spiritual body. It's a physical body that can still eat fish. Are we still in the building? Because redemption is spirit, soul, and body. So, it's a physical body that Jesus rose from the dead with. He rose from the dead with a physical body. So, that means that when he rose from the dead, there was victory over pain. Because that physical body that was battered, that physical body that bore our sicknesses, when Jesus now rose with that body, it was an announcement of victory over pain. Physical pain. Victory over pain. Alright? Now, please pay attention. There was also victory over sickness when Jesus rose. And there was victory over disease. Victory over pain. Victory over sickness. Victory over disease. The devil has no right to rattle your body with pain. The devil has no right to rattle your body with disease. No matter what is the excuse for that disease, it has no right over your body. Your body has been bought with a price. Redemption paid for that body. Irrespective and in spite of what the disease is and how it came, it's been paid for anyway. And it was not paid for economically. It was paid for properly. 
So your body, the devil has no right to rattle your body and riddle your body with pain and disease and discomfort and infirmity. No, Jesus bore it. He took it. I don't have it. He took it. I don't have it. He took it on his body. My body cannot handle it or carry it because my body is not dumping ground. My body is precious. My body has been paid for. I cannot be sick. I refuse to be sick and I refuse to consider it. I refuse to consider it. Abraham considered not under the old covenant. He considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb. But he was strong in faith giving glory to God. Being fully persuaded that faithful is he who promised who was able also to perform. Of course, you know, the New Testament does not record fault. Because Abraham staggered. Abraham staggered a lot. Abraham staggered. It was out of staggering he pregnanted his house girl and produced uh, Ishmael. He staggered. But when the New Testament recorded, it didn't record the staggering. It only recorded the faith. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that faithful is he who promised, who was able also to perform. Calling the things that be not as though they were. He began to call the things that be not. And, and you know, those same principles are the same principles that works for the believer who knows that those are his redemptive rights. I refuse to be sick. My body cannot be sick. Pain cannot survive my body. My body is wired and immunized to resist pain and not to accommodate it. My body is immunized never to accommodate infirmity, disease, pressure, and my body cannot, cannot accommodate pain and disease and cannot accommodate discomfort. No, my body is wired to resist it. You begin to speak those words. You begin to call those. And that's your right. Because Jesus bore it in his body on the tree. He took your pain. He took your disease. And when he rose from the dead, all pain, disease, and sickness was defeated. The same price that paid for sin, paid for sickness, paid for disease, paid for pain. And you can live strong and healthy all the days of your life on earth. And you can live here and live well. Somebody didn't shout a powerful amen. You can live here and live well. You don't have to manage life. Carrying one disease where you have to be entertaining the disease because the disease has told you there's a way you have to operate. If you don't move in that way, the disease cannot allow you. So a disease affects your comfort on earth. No, 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 no. No. You can't sleep without pills. That's bondage. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You can be worshipping a particular medication. No, you can break out of those things. Jesus bore it. I don't have it. Am I communicating at all? He took it. I don't have it. Zakotana. Zakotana. Tonight, you can walk out of anything that makes your life uncomfortable. Tonight, you have a right to step out of anything that disfigures, disorganizes, and mesmerizes. The comfort that you have in Christ Jesus. Matola daya. Zebora kata. Mebara kato ninge. Zebra nanga latoshke tele de baha. His spirit went to hell and came out born again. The first begotten from the dead. So there was victory over spiritual death. And victory over physical death. Jesus rose triumphantly. Defeating physical death. Spiritual death. Pain. Sickness. Disease. And everything that the enemy offers anyone. You are established in righteousness. You are far from oppression. Nakotanaga. Eternally secured, protected and kept. By virtue of the finished work of Christ. Somebody shout I hear you. His spirit went to hell. And he rose born again. You know people think like this. And I want you to listen because I'm going to leave you with a thought. That Jesus went to heaven. Presented himself. Came back. Ate. And taught his disciples for 40 days. Then he went again. Now. If he went again. I'd like you to think. Which of them. Is typical of the rapture. Which of those. Is typical of the rapture. Remember. He came. He went. He came again. 
and went again. Which of those is typical of the rapture? Think about it. We'll answer it in a few days. So his physical body was just like Adam. It was prepared for him. That was why it was incarnation. Incarnation means Jesus didn't take his body from Mary. He entered into Mary's womb with his body. He didn't take blood from Mary. Mm -mm. He came with his own blood into Mary's womb. That's why it's incarnation. Mary was a sinner. Jesus was sinless. There's no way his blood and her blood will meet. There's no way, you know, he, he will take body from her. Everything he had was prepared specially for that purpose. A body that was prepared me. That's why we say Jesus just used Mary to come out. You know, like I've always explained, it's called incarnation. That's just the best way to describe. Incarnation means it was a miracle. Are you still in the building? Now, please listen carefully. It's obvious too that Jesus' body dealt with temporal issues. Not eternal issues. The body. His body dealt with temporal issues. Not eternal issues in the work of redemption. His spirit dealt with eternal issues. While his body dealt with temporal issues. His spirit dealt with eternal issues. While his body dealt with temporal issues. The same order was followed in redemption. Because what happened to man's body was temporal. It is, it is what happened to man's spirit that was eternal in nature. That's why Romans chapter 8 verse 11. Put it up for me. Romans chapter 8 verse number 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. We can look at it two ways. Two ways. Someone says that is the rapture. No. That verse is not the rapture. The rapture is not a quickening. The rapture is a wearing of another body. Mortality putting on immortality is what we call the rapture. Mortality, wearing immortality is the rapture. But here, he's not talking about wearing something. He's talking about a quickening. It says this mortal body shall put on immortality in the rapture. So, in Romans 8, 11, he's dealing with the power of God in our physical bodies. The power of God in our physical bodies. I wake up every morning and I walk around my room and I say to myself, the power of God is at work in my body. The power of God is at work in my body. The power of God is actively at work in my members. And as I begin to stretch my legs and lift my hand and just move certain parts of my body, I announce the power of God is at work in my body. And if I sense any discomfort in any part of my body, I stay there for a while. The power of God is at work in this body. The power of God is actively at work in this body. And suddenly the pains disappear. Because the power of God is at work. Is it not at work? While Jesus taught what was present, the power of God. What did he do when it was present? It healed. The power of God. My body is the container of God's power. I thought you would say that with me. Say it two more times. Say it one more time. Say my body carries the totality of God's power. So sickness cannot survive where the power of God is actively at work. Say the power of God is actively at work in my body. The power of God is creatively at work in my body. So any organ of my body that requires a correction, the creative power of God is at work in my members. I didn't hear somebody shout a powerful amen. The power of God is at work in my body. Actively at work. Because the Bible says we carry, you know, this treasure in eighteen vessels. So, there is treasure in our bodies. There is treasure so that the excellency of the power May, be, may not be of us but of him. So that is why the power is in our body. See, the same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells, not visits. Not visits, dwells. When you sleep, you sleep with the power. When you wake up in the morning, the power is still working. 
When you are relaxing, the power is at work. Whether you are conscious or you are not conscious, the power dwells. It doesn't visit. The power dwells. If only believers can be conscious of this reality and acknowledge this reality all the time, Satan will not be able to have anything to do with their body. Remember, Paul said, for this cause. For this cause. Not for these causes. For this cause. Many are sick. Many are weak. Many sleep. I say some sleep. He said because they do not discern. They do not discern the lost body. Then he says all of us are members of that one bread. And that one bread is that body that defeated sickness. Oh my goodness. That body is the body that defeated pain. That body is the body that defeated disease and infirmity. That same body is what you are a part of by identification and the power of God resides in that body of yours. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Zokala tabaraka. Zebali neheria. Better lives, better bodies, better strength in the name of Jesus. Somebody is not shouting amen. So Jesus' body typified the Passover lamb for us, which was to be eaten. If you look at the blood for the atonement, the blood for the atonement was for God. Listen carefully. The blood in the Passover was for them. That's why when it comes to sin, Listen carefully. When it comes to sin, uh, your sin is not between you and Satan. When it comes to sin, your sin is not between you and Satan. Sin is between you and God. You don't sin against the devil. You do not sin against the devil. The devil himself is a sinner. So the believer's sin is between him and God and God has taken care of it ahead of time in the mediator between God and man. Who is the propitiation and who is the advocate for the brother or the sister who sins. If any man sin, we have an advocate. We have the advocacy. It's not the devil. You don't owe the devil anything. You don't owe the devil anything. You didn't hear what I said. Even when you are wrong, when you do wrong, in your wrong, you can cast out demons without, without saying, I'm sorry. You didn't hear what I said. If that's too radical, we can leave it for next year so that you can think about it. That is, you've done wrong and Satan appears. You cast him out and he has, he has no right to disobey because he has nothing against you. Everything he had against you, Jesus took care of it. He has nothing against you. That's why Jesus will look at that woman because that's the only person that had the right to condemn that woman. Those people that brought the woman to Jesus had no right to condemn her. They had no right. Because under the law, even under the law of Moses, it's only the sinless that can condemn the sinner. That's why when they brought her, Jesus said, any of you that is without sin, has the first stone. And they all disappear because at the end of the day, they have nothing against her. Then the only person that could have condemned her looked at her and said, neither do I. If it is left to me, between me and you, there's nothing. Why? God justifies the ungodly. Uh, God is the justifier of the ungodly. He's not the condemner of the ungodly. He has not come to condemn the world. Listen, he didn't say he has not come to condemn the church. He said he has not come to condemn the world. Alright? But that the world through him might be saved. So, what has he given? He has given the word reconciliation. What he has offered the world is reconciliation. And in reconciliation, you wave off your rights to be able to, to, to reconcile. If you are making the moves for reconciliation, you have no rights. Because it's you who wants the reconciliation. So you wave off. God wanted reconciliation. But in order for God not to be criminal in his operation, he took all that would have been the hindrance to him waving off his rights. He took it on him on your behalf. 
So when he died the death on the cross, he had the right to wave off. Whatever you have done and told it doesn't matter, just come. Somebody has paid on your behalf. I mean, how do you explain that law? How do you explain that kind of law? That's just called over the top good news. It makes no sense to a religious mind that has been wired with works. It makes no sense to a religious head that has been totally molested with performance. It makes no sense to a religious head that has been corrupted with, with achievements. It only makes sense to a sinner who does not qualify. That's the person that makes sense. Because he knows I don't qualify. So if you are offering it to me, there must be something. But the man who, who, who is messed up with works, even when he's collecting the offer, he's still trying to do something. He's still trying to do something. You know what I'm talking about? He's still trying to do something. You are invited to a big feast with everything on the table because you are wired for, 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 for works. You still brought a bottle of Ragoli's water. And when you entered, you dropped it on the table. And look at how it is out of place. Because the water on the table is not Ragoli's. It's a different kind of water. And you're bringing Ragoli's. Work, works, works mentality. When people bring their works, that is how it looks. <laughs> Woo! He said, come for all things are ready. I prepared everything. Say no, I am not coming. I, I want to bring some. No, no, we don't need anything from you. Everything you need has been considered and has been provided for. Glory to God. Oh yes, it's, it's not of works. Lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. For we are his workmanship created where? In Christ Jesus unto good works which God before ordained that we should walk in them. Can I have a powerful amen? So now, please pay attention. So when it comes to sin, it's not between you and Satan. It's between you and God. When it comes to evil, sickness, and disease. Listen carefully. When it comes to evil, sickness, and disease, it is between you and evil. It's not between you and God. When it comes to sickness, disease, and evil, it is between you and evil. When it comes to sin, it is between you and God, which has been taken care of. When it comes to evil, it's not between you and God. So you don't call God for it. You don't call God for sickness. You don't call God for disease. He has already told you, I am rougher. I am your immunity. He has already told you, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And that promise in Exodus has been fulfilled in Christ Jesus. And you are in Christ. All the promises of God are in him where you are fulfilled. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. Now, so look at this. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. I'm enjoying myself tonight. Are you enjoying this? First Peter chapter 5 verse number 8. Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He is not seeking everybody to devour. He is seeking whom? He can't seek everybody. There are people he cannot devour. One of them is talking to you right now. He is seeking whom? He has to seek. Because there are those of us he cannot devour. And if you are in the building, your amen will come with an attitude. He goes about seeking whom he may whom he may, even when he finds somebody, has to try him to see if the person is available. It shows you the littleness of the devil. It shows you the helplessness of the devil. He's seeking whom, put it up, whom he may devour. Now, watch the next verse. Watch the next verse. Whom resists? Whom you don't call God. When it comes to sickness, Satan, evil, don't call God. It's between you and that evil. It's only when it comes to sin that it's between you and God where you receive of the advocacy of Jesus. But when it comes to the devil, it's not between you and God and the devil. God is out of it. He has handed the devil to you with his baggages. You determine what happens to them. That's why I say, whom you whom you, somebody say I, yeah, whom you resist. You resist. And what does brother Paul say? Resist the devil and he will argue. What will he do? So all he needs from you is what? Resistance. Resistance. Don't just lie down like, like a sheep led to the slaughter. No. 
No. When it comes to the devil, don't lie down like a sheep. When it comes to the devil, you are in authority. Whom resist? The key word there, the active word there, is the word resist. Whom resist steadfast in. Don't go out of the faith to resist. You stay in the faith where you are and put up a resistance. Don't go and be asking for deliverance. You have left the faith. When a believer starts going around because of problems he cannot explain and start looking for how they will deliver him and they start subjecting him to all kinds of, all kinds of humiliating experiences, he has left the faith. He's no more in the faith. And because he's no more in the faith, he cannot resist. If you leave the faith, you cannot resist. Your resistance will be in. You resist in. You don't go out of the faith to resist. You stay in the faith and put up a resistance. And it's guaranteed. God has faith in what he has put inside you. That's why God is not a party to you resisting. He allows you because he trusts just like he trusted his word in the mouth of Jesus to raise him from the dead. God didn't have to come around to say, is he obeying you? Jesus, are you sure? No. No. He gave him his word in the scripture. Put his power in those words and left Jesus alone. And Jesus announced, I lay down my life by myself and I pick it up myself. It is not a big deal. You, you can't touch me except it be given to you. He was even talking to the authorities. You can't touch me. You can't do me anything. Except be given to you. You can't, you can't do me anything. I know what to do to bring myself out. He got in there. Third day, he began to declare the word. Thou shalt not leave my soul in hell. Now allow the holy one see corruption. Boom. The guy came out. The same way God trusts his word with Jesus' resurrection, he trusts his word with the believer's authority. Same way. Say not in your heart. Who shall go to heaven and bring Christ up? Say not in your heart. Who shall go to the grave to raise Christ up? What says it? The word is neither in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So you resist steadfast in the faith. You resist the devil steadfast. Am I communicating at all? You resist the devil steadfast in the faith. So the way you will resist the devil is a steadfastness in the faith. That is, there is a consistency in what Christ has done for you. You stay in what Christ has done. In the consciousness of what Christ has done. In the realization of what Christ has done. You stay in the full acknowledgement of what Christ has done. And maintain your stance in the finished work of Christ. And refuse to consider the opposition. Refuse to consider the contrary winds. Refuse to consider the symptoms. And refuse to consider the medical reports. You stay in that faith and be fully conscious of what Christ has done. And in that consistency is the resistance. In that, as you stay in that consistent position, that is the resistance that puts the devil to fly. That is the resistance. That is the resistance. Whom you resist that fast in the faith. He is not asking you to establish a WhatsApp group with the devil. You know, two of you have a WhatsApp group. So you tell the devil, hey, Hey, what's up, man? They will say, yeah, we're just chilling here. What's up, man? And two of you are whatsapping each other with the devil. The devil says, uh, I don't know what you're thinking about. You say, I, I command you to go out. I will not go out. In case you think, in fact, even if I was changing my mind, I'm not going to go again. Say, eh, fire, fire. Say, that's, ah, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm about to go out. I won't go again. I won't go again. You are Satan? No, no, no. No such interaction. You stay in the faith. And in that faith, you maintain uh, that the communication of your faith may become effectual. How? By the act, you stay in that faith and don't come out. You maintain your stance in the faith and in the faith is the resistance of the devil. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. When you are in the faith, he knows you are not one of those he can devour. When you take your stance in the faith, he knows you're not one of those he can mess around with. Calamity strikes? No, not here. Disaster is striking? No, not here. 
I take authority not where I am. Are we in the building here? Yeah. Whom you resist steadfast in the faith. You resist steadfast in the faith. He's asking you to be steadfast in the faith. Look at Colossians 2 5. Zibato pe la katana. Colossians chapter 2 verse 5. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of what? Your faith where? In Christ. The steadfastness, the consistency. Because not the one, someone said, it looks like the sickness has gone. Ah, no, it has come back. No, there's no consistency. By his stripes, I was healed. No, he took it, I don't have it. He took it, I don't have it. Ah, God, this thing has increased now. My whole body is breaking down. There's no consistency. Somebody say, but are we to deny the, the pain? No, you don't deny the pain. You know that there is pain in your body, but you know something that is better. You know that where you are, that pain is not supposed to operate. So you stay in the consciousness of knowing that that pain is a stranger to that body. In that consciousness, you, you serve that pain and notice while you keep acknowledging what Christ has already done for you. I don't know if I'm communicating here. You maintain the consistency of your faith. You maintain the consistency of your faith. Don't talk to God about it. God, it's not between you and God. It's between you and the situation. If you shall say to this mountain, not if you shall say to God, whosoever shall say to this, say this, uh, this, this, be thou removed and be thou cast to the sea and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things you say shall come to pass, you shall have what you say. You say, hey, you say, the word is in your mouth, the power is in your mouth. You say, he has said that I may boldly say the Lord is my helper. I'm not afraid what man can do. Of course, men plan, but I'm not afraid. Because where I am, men's plans don't work. Come on, you know. The legal and the vital. What you are hearing here is the vital work of salvation. This is the vital. This vital work is because a legal work has been done. So, based on what Christ has done, this is where you brag. This is the believer's bragging point. You brag, standing on existing protocol of the legality of salvation. You begin to declare and demand and call the things that be not as though they were. You are not a victim, you are a victor. You are not a beggar, you are in charge. You are not, you are not, you are not you are not weak. You are strong. You are in charge. The devil and his cohorts are under you. You are in charge here. Say, I hear you. I didn't hear you. Say, I hear you. That's right. Taladabas. Taladabas. Chutalabagada. Look at that Colossians chapter 2 verse 6. Look at it. Verse 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. He is talking about the conduct of faith. The conduct of faith. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. When I was studying these the early hours of this morning, I couldn't help myself. I stood up by my study table and I was just dancing around the table. I was just dancing. You know, sometimes when I study, I do crazy things. Sometimes some light will break out. I will just fall from my chair, lie on the floor and shout. And roll on the floor. Sometimes when redemption realities dawn on your head, even your physical body becomes too small for the kind of experience. It's light. Light is sweet. Light is sweet. Sometimes I scream, and house people come to find out if I'm okay. I can never, I could have never been more okay than when I'm misbehaving like this. That is when I am very okay. <laughs> Woo! Glory! Glory! Now, wait, 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 wait. Let's. Ephesians 6 16. Above all, somebody shout above all. Taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench how many? 
all the fiery darts of the wicked. All. All. Not some of them. All the fiery darts. That is, you use your faith as a shield. What is this faith? Galatians 2.20 I live by the faith of the Son of God. So this faith is the faith of the Son of God. The faith of the Son of God. The faith by which you were justified. The faith of the Son of God. The faith by which you were justified. The faith by which you were accepted in the beloved. Now, above all, use that faith as a shield of defense. As a shield of protection. What do you use a shield for? You use a shield to protect yourself from bullets. If there's a fight, you use your shield for protection. That is, you stay in the faith and you leave the faith while you are inside it as a shield. And that shield goes to work when there's consistency in the faith. When there's consistency in the faith. When there's consistency in the faith. A woman in this church was believing for the fruit of the womb. I laid hands on her. She took in that same month. Three months after she came back that she's bleeding seriously. And the doctor says she may lose the baby. I said, do you want to lose the baby or keep the baby? She said, I, 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 I want to keep the baby. I put a hand on that stomach. And I said, this baby will be here to turn. And you deliver this baby complete. Nothing missing. She bled till the eighth month and delivered a bouncing baby boy. Why? You resisted fast. You stay in the faith. You stay in the faith. You stay in the faith. Yeah, the things are not working. You stay in the faith. You stay in the faith. The more it gets rough, the louder your mouth gets. Jito Ladaba. Even when it looks like there is no life, you keep talking. You keep talking the talk until you see what you say come to pass. He says, if you maintain your talk, you shall have what you say. You shall have it. You shall have it. Many people have more faith in the devil's foolishness than in the word of God. Many people have more faith in the devil's foolishness than in the word of God. All the devil has is fiery dark. You have the weapon. Potent. Fire dark. Fire dark. So I say, oh, they took your name to native doctor. Come, come, come. You don't have the complete name. Give him your native name, your primary school name, your guy name. I used to have guy name in school. Add your guy name. Add your native name. Eh? Add your son name. Add the name of your great-grandfather. Then put your house address. Tell them to take it. Listen, that devil has not been born. I've been talking like this. This is not the first time. That devil has not been born that will throw a charm at me and it works. He, he, that devil has not been born. Leave that in. I have dared the devil years now. For over close to 40 years of my ministry, I have dared the devil consistency. If you were born well, appear here now, pastor. If you were born well, appear here. Believers will be panicking. They say, they say the other day somebody cut a piece of my cloth and took it to native doctor. Tell him it's not just a piece. You want up and down. You want up and down. That devil that could not stop you the day you had the gospel. You were under the yoke of bondage. Satan was messing around. You just had the word of faith, the gospel of your salvation. And deliberately, you took steps and walked out. Satan was watching you. You walked out and received Christ. And you were translated from darkness to light. And he could not stop you. Is it now that you are in the light? Hey, If you are hearing the sound of my voice, shout, I hear you. He said, oh, house of Jacob, come. And let us walk in the light. For he that walketh in the light has no occasion of stumbling. Move all. Take the shield of it. Above all. Above medical consultations. Above medical analysis. Above all. There is something that medical science cannot offer. Doctors can diagnose. They can recommend. Let me tell you the truth. Most of the drugs doctors recommend for you are attempts. 
they are attempting. They are trying within the limitation of their knowledge to give you what they think might handle it. But faith does not attempt. Faith is like a cruise missile. When you unleash it, it will bypass obstacles and it will not detonate till it arrives at target. Shatter Ladaba. That's why when Jesus spoke to the fig tree, it went to the root of the tree and ended the life of the tree at the root. What are you talking about? Faith goes right to the target. Faith does not miss fire. And faith does not miss target. It will go direct to the target. That is why above all, you take the shield of faith. Is it called Ataba? Somebody blessed tonight. You take the shield of faith. The, the shield of faith. You will now say, look, I am what the word says I am. I have what the word says I have. I can do what the word says I can do. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. By his stripes, I was healed. My body has been bought with a price. Therefore, I glorify God in my body and in my spirit, which are God's. You begin to declare what God says. I am accepted in the beloved. As he is, so am I, that I may have boldness in the day of judgment. I am the redeemed of the Lord. Therefore, I say, by his stripes I was healed. I say, everything is working. I say, money come to me. I kemalo te balataga. You refuse to see what the devil is doing. You see what Christ has done. You hear that? Refuse to see what the devil is doing. Focus on what Christ has done. As he is, so am I. What are you doing? When you are talking like that, you are being steadfast in the faith. You are being steadfast in the faith. It's not Satan go away. Satan go away. You are playing. No? Satan pack your load and go. I say pack your load and go. Satan pack your load and go. In Jesus name. You are playing. No? You are playing. When he land you slap from the back of your head. Why you think you're doing PRK? Hey, don't pack your load and go. I say pack your load and go. I say pack your load. Pack? Which load? First of all, he will ask you, where is the load? Why are you lying against it? Such people play too much. We play too much. We take things that are very serious and we turn them to play. Good morning, Jesus. Morning. In the realm of the spirit, you're, you're calling money. No morning in the spirit. There is no morning in the spirit. Morning is a function of material world. Let me close this up. Before this thing will vex me now. You see big people dance, play, clapping hands. I went to London to preach. London. When they're watching me now. Not the people watching me. I went to a church in London. <laughs> a few years ago. Guess what they were singing? Mami, what up? Power. Powerless. 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 In London. Some of them even laid on the floor. Powerless. 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 Even the pastor. Powerless. Powerless. Power. See all of them dancing. Mami, what up? Power. Powerless. And they took time on Satan, Mami, Water, or Banja in London. I sat in that service asking myself, where do I start from? <laughs> where, where do we start this teaching from? Mother, where do we start from? Even the pastor is <laughs> worse than the members. This is a situation of blind people leading blind people. Mami, Water, power, Powerless, Powerless. I'm, I'm still seeing it in my head as I'm talking. Then they will answer, Jesus, power, everyone says, pa, super power, super, super, super. Mami Watapa, the Mami Wata was longer. Jesus only small. When they do small, then they stop. They enter the other one. I'm like, these people are joker. These people are joker. Those people play too much. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. Neither give place to the devil. Don't give him room. Don't give him space. Don't spend time, you know, analyzing what he has done or what he's doing. 
do that, Satan will just play with you. When you say powerless, you also join in. Powerless, powerless. All of you will be dancing together. But be steadfast in the faith. Amen? The same way the blood was for them in Egypt. On that Passover night. Where everybody that was in the building could not be touched. Today we have that blood in our bodies. We have that life in our bodies. We have divine immunity. We have divine immunity in our system. He bore it. I don't have it. Stand on your feet. That's all I've got for you tonight. Glory to God. He bore it. I don't have it. You resist the devil. He flees forever. Somebody shout a powerful amen. Father, thank you for everybody under the sound of my voice in this building, online, on television, on radio, those watching us anywhere all over the world. All our campuses and house centers and everybody hearing the sound of my voice on Comfort FM right now, XL FM and all the various FMs, Radio Aquaibum, everybody hearing me tonight. In the name of Jesus, where the enemy, the devil, the adversary has molested and messed around with you, I command the devil, stop in the name of Jesus. Now get your hands, get your hands off of God's property in the name of Jesus. I command every storm, every wind, every instability, every demonic molestation, every, every temporal situation messing around with you in the name of Jesus, cease in the name of Jesus. And I speak peace over your home, peace over your mind, peace over your health, peace over your family, peace over your career, peace over your business. Peace be still in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare tonight, Lord, that everyone hearing the sound of my voice grows in knowledge, grows in revelation until nothing else matters. And I decree sick bodies be healed from your head to the soles of your foot. Receive healing now. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Thank you for the working of the Spirit in our members. And thank you for the opportunity to know and walk in the reality of what redemption has provided. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Are you excited tonight? Can we give the Lord the craziest shout in this building? Let's celebrate what we have tonight. Glory! Glory! Amen. Now, I'm joining Mr. Michael Bush in another two minutes. He's already in the studio, you know, uh, in the building. And it's so good to have you, Mr. Michael Bush, right in the studio in there. And uh, just before I join him in two minutes, I want to take up your offerings. And I want to thank all of you that are supporting us to make sure that the budget of the next 30 days of glory is fully paid for. Thank you for your sacrifices. Thank you for your efforts. And thank you for willingly giving to the advancement of the kingdom of God. And tonight, as we give again, it's an opportunity to still honor the word, honor our commitment to the gospel, and make ourselves a blessing until all the families of the earth be blessed. Please grab your offerings. If you're watching online, grab yours on TV. The radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush, will read out the banking details for you in another minute or two. And uh, everybody else, if you're watching us in a location where there's no account that is relevant, and you really want to give to this ministry to help us keep bringing out this good word so that people are built up around the body of Christ worldwide. I would like to pray over the offerings. And if you don't, if there's no account in your area. If you shoot a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com, you will get a reply with the right banking details for your location. But we love you and thank you for giving. And we receive your givings in faith and we appreciate you. Let's pray together. Father, we give in faith tonight. We give with joy and we thank you for the privilege that through our monies, we're able to make a difference in the advancement of the kingdom. And as we give, we give with joy. We give in honor. And we thank you for the opportunity to advance your cause on the earth. Thank you for what you're doing in 60 days of glory. Thank you that through our givings, tabernacles have been erected all over the world. Men and women that will preach this gospel without fear and compromise. And we rejoice that we are privileged by you to be partakers of what you're doing. Thank you for the blessing tonight. I decree for everyone in need of a miracle, receive a miracle in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the blessing. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Praise God. Thank you again for giving. We love you guys and uh, we're looking forward to connecting with you in the next studio right there with Mr. Michael Bush. And as we connect right now, everybody in this building, can we give the, you know, our viewers a great shout and just celebrate them as we connect with them in the other studio. Praise God. <clears throat> we trust that you have been blessed by this message. For these 